Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cis loop ligand gated ion channels. Now, uh, in this video, what we're going to talk about is uh, acetylcholinesterases. Now, you might be wondering, uh, well, what, what's that got to do with cis loop ligand gated ion channels? Well, the answer is that um, we're going to talk about acetylcholinesterases specifically in uh, the neuromuscular junction. And on the other side of the synapse at the neuromuscular junction, you have a nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, which is a cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. So basically, this was the best fit playlist for me to discuss acetylcholinesterases in. Now, uh, the structure for this video is we're going to start by looking at the structure of a uh, neuromuscular junction. What we're then going to talk about is the function of an acetylcholinesterase enzyme. We'll then have a little bit of a clinical correlate. So we're going to talk about myasthenia gravis, okay, which it will uh, be nice and relevant for our uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction. And then we'll talk about acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. And you might wonder, well, what's the myasthenia gravis doing there? Well, basically, Acetylcholinesterases, mo inhibitors rather, most of them are used to treat myasthenia gravis or diagnose myasthenia gravis. The other major use for inhibitors of the acetylcholinesterase enzyme is in treating Alzheimer's disease because in Alzheimer's disease, one of the first things uh, that actually degenerates is the basal forebrain nuclei, which are these nuclei within the brain which release acetylcholine onto other brain cells. Okay, uh, so by inhibiting the acetylcholinesterase enzymes, the enzymes which break down acetylcholine, which I haven't told you yet, but we will get there, uh, you can increase the acetylcholine within the brain. And it's the decline in acetylcholine in the brain that you get because of the uh, degeneration of the basal forebrain nuclei uh, that is believed to underlie many of the cognitive effects of Alzheimer's disease, such as uh, loss of memory uh, and loss of the ability to um, well, loss of co cognitive defects, we'll put them. Loss of ability to think, maybe. Okay, right. So, let's start off with the structure of the neuromuscular junction. So, the neuromuscular junction is often abbreviated to the NMJ for short. Okay, and this is basically the name for a synapse, as it really is. But a sy the reason it's not called a synapse is because it's a synapse is strictly between two neurons, whereas this is between a neuron and a skeletal muscle cell. So that's why instead it is known as a neuromuscular junction. Okay, so let's say we have our presynaptic neuron here. Okay, so this is the alpha motor neuron, which is going to um, synapse onto the um, muscle fiber. So here now, is the sarcolemma of our myofiber. And this is completely out of proportion. So the way I've drawn it, the axon terminal is enormous and the myofiber is pretty titchy. Whereas the reality is this is going to be tiny, a blip on this huge great cell. So these myofibers are absolutely enormous cells. Okay, and another little fun fact is the uh, cell membrane of myofibers is often referred to as the sarcolemma. So sarco is from some ancient language meaning muscle. Okay, so that's why many of the um, uh, well, many of the cell components in uh, muscle cells have sarco as a prefix. Right. So the way this works is that the presynaptic neuron, the alpha motor neuron, when it, an action potential arrives in this alpha motor neuron, it's going to trigger this alpha motor neuron to release acetylcholine. And I think we might as well now, whilst we're here, discuss the structure of acetylcholine because it's going to be important later when we come to discuss the function of the acetylcholinesterases. So acetylcholine, or ACH then, Okay, so it basically consists of an acetic acid molecule esterified with a choline molecule. So let me show you the structure of both of those, and we'll see then how you combine them together to make uh, an acetylcholine molecule. 
So, acetic acid is the old name for ethanoic acid, or what chemists would now call ethanoic acid. So, it's a two-carbon, fully saturated carboxylic acid. So, this is acetic acid. Okay? The other components of acetylcholine is that you then have the alcohol choline. So, choline, you then have this alcohol group with these two methylene groups, like so. And then off this methylene group here, you then have a nitrogen atom with three methyl groups coming off it. Now, nitrogen should not have four bonds. One of these bonds that it has formed will basically be providing, well, in one of these bonds, the nitrogen will be providing both electrons, basically. So it therefore will have lost a negative charge, so it will gain a positive charge. Okay, so the nitrogen is positively charged, and this is the structure of the alcohol choline. Now, what you're going to do is, to make acetylcholine, you're going to take this alcohol group off of the carboxylic acid group of the acetic acid, and you'll take the hydrogen off the alcohol group of the choline, okay? And those will go together to make water, so you'll produce water, which is why this is known as a condensation reaction, okay? Um, so, because it's producing condensation, essentially. And then what you will do is you'll bind this carbon here to the oxygen of this alcohol group of the choline molecule, and that will create you acetyl, because this remaining group here is known as an acetyl group, and then choline, so ACH. Right, and I should just say that acetylcholine is often abbreviated to A for acetyl, CH for choline. Right, uh, so this is what's known as an ester link when you link a carboxylic acid group like this to an alcohol. Okay, right. So, the alpha motor neuron will release acetylcholine onto the sarcolemma of the myofiber, and the acetylcholine will then bind and act to and activate nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, which are on the membrane of the alpha motor neuron. And since this is a playlist on cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, let us discuss the structure of this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, which we find on uh, the sarcolemma of myofibers. Right, so let's just have a brief discussion of the structure of that receptor. So it's a ligand-gated ion channel, and basically it's a cis-loop ligand-gated ion channel. So there are three main families of, of ligand-gated ion channels. One of them is the cis-loop ligand-gated ion channels, and it is this family to which the uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptor belongs. So, if this is our nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, what we find is that it's not made up of just one protein. Instead, it's made up of a whole pentamer of proteins. You have five separate proteins making up this nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, like so. So, one, two, three, four, five. So, it is a pentamer, basically. So, it's not just one protein. Instead, it's made up of five separate proteins, which are all bound together in this pentamer here. Right. Now, if we take one of these subunits out, so let's take this one out here, which I've highlighted in blue. If we imagine taking this out and have a look at its structure, then what we find is that its membrane-spanning topology looks like so. Okay, so here's the phospholipid bilayer again. So this blue protein looked at in more detail looks like so. Here's the amino terminus of the protein. And by the way, I should probably just point out that this is the extracellular fluid. The same for this diagram. This is the extracellular fluid. And then the other side is the cytoplasm down here. Okay, so the amino terminus of this subunit of the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor is on the extracellular face. Then what it has is it has an important portion here after which the whole receptor is named. So this is the cis loop, and I'll explain to you what a cis loop is in a moment. Okay, and then what you have is four membrane-spanning domains. So the first membrane-spanning alpha helix is called M1. The second membrane-spanning alpha helix is M2. The third membrane-spanning alpha helix is M3. You then have a large loop 
uh, called the intracellular loop between M3 and then M4, and then you finish with M4 and have a carboxylic acid uh, terminus over there. So let me label up the different portions of this. So let's do this in colour. In blue, sorry, in turquoise here, this is the intracellular loop here. So this is the intracellular loop. Okay, and then we've got the four membrane spanning alpha helices, which are named M1 to M4. And then you have this important portion that's the pre M1 region up here, which is called the extracellular domain, which contains this um, cis loop. So this is the extracellular or EC domain. Okay, so. We'll continue this video in the next, sorry, we'll continue this discussion in the next video. And um, the first thing I'll tell you is what a cis loop is.